Hello, welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be looking at adding uh, vMotion and migrating VMs. And these VMs will be both uh, powered off and powered on. Uh, this is going to be uh, lab number eight out of the nine labs. Uh, we've completed uh, quite a few. We've installed our hypervisors, our ESXi, uh, and then, ins then we installed nested ESI ESXi's inside of that. So we have we have an installed uh, ESXi on a, on a physical server, and then inside that we've installed two more ESXi's in a nested configuration. Then we've installed our vSphere client in order to be able to manage those. And then we've installed the FreeNAS as uh, shared storage. And then we installed our vCenter server. And we're using the vCenter server to uh, add some more features. We're going to be able to do our migration our cloning and then we're going to do some clustering where we'll actually show that and demo the HA and DRS features of clustering that's the high availability and the and the uh, uh, distributed resource scheduler so let's get started with eight uh, vMotion is needed to migrate VMs uh, from host to host vMotion will be set up as a separate network and it will be labeled and designated just for vMotion and vMotion is also needed uh, for clustering uh, and showing the features HA and DRS. So let's get going. Uh, first, we're gonna uh, we have our this is the vCenter server, and we're looking at uh, the new data center that we we created, and we have uh, two hosts uh, .80 and .90. Uh, <coughs> Inside 80, we've got uh, a VM, uh, Windows 2K or 2003, and that's one of the VMs that we're going to be using uh, for the migration. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, go to configuration in our tabs, and we're going to be selecting add networking, and this is where we'll be creating the new network for vMotion. So selecting the add networking, we get this window, and we're going to select the VM kernel. Uh, VM kernel is going to be needed for our vMotion. So we'll go ahead and select that. Select your next window. Uh, if you have added uh, three network cards, you'll see this window. We started off with our VM NIC 0. And then we also have 1 and 2. This automatically will default to our next available NIC, which is uh, VM NIC 1. So you can just uh, go ahead and go to your next screen. Uh, we're going to label uh, this network vMotion so that we know we've, we're going to use it for vMotion. And then it's going to be designated down here that this uh, network is just to be used uh, for vMotion. We're going to set an IP address uh, for this network. It's going to be similar to the IP address that we set uh, for this particular host. But instead of the one here, we're going to set it for two. So it's going to be a different network completely. Same subnet mask. And now we have it. We've created our, our new switch. And we have a, have a port here. It's, and it's designated vMotion. And connected to this, we have our network card, uh, VM NIC1. So you can see that there are there's two uh, switches now. Switch zero, which was originally uh, designated for our management network, and that's our original uh, IP address for connecting to the host. And now we have a new uh, network and a new switch, and this one is just designated for vMotion. And the new network has a 2.80 uh, in it and a and its own uh, network card. Now, since this is nested. This network card's not actually connected to anything. This card here is connected to our network, uh, and, but this network card here is not. It's an internal network, and it's going to be used for the switch. Uh, next, we're going to be adding uh, the hosts uh, to our data center. Uh, we're going to be adding host uh, 192.168.1.70.80 uh, and dot 90 so we'll be adding three hosts to our data center uh, first one here we're going to do is the 80 the dot 80 you're going to go ahead and put in the root and the password and then select next 
You'll see this unable to verify authenticity. Go ahead and click uh, yes, it's okay. Uh, some of the information uh, that we're adding. Uh, no uh, license key, we're just gonna be using the evaluation mode. And we're not gonna set lockdown mode. Now lockdown mode will keep you from using vSphere client or vCenter to manage this. You would actually have to go to the console itself. Uh, so we don't wanna select lockdown mode. Uh, we're going to be assigning this host to the new data center that we created. And here's some information as to what we're going to be adding. And go ahead and click Finish or Next. And we now have a new host added to our data center. We already have .70. Uh, this host, if you look down here in the recent tasks, it's not uh, yet completed uh, setting this host up. Once it does, uh, this little uh, mark here will go away. And now we have the host uh, completely initialized, but it's in maintenance mode. So we need to right click on that and exit our maintenance mode. Now we're going to head and add our second host, which is going to be their .90. And now we have the uh, second. Now we're going to migrate. We're going to select uh, one of the VMs that we created under host.70. Uh, and we're going to migrate it uh, to our first host here, dot eighty. So right-click on the VM, select Migrate. Then we're going to. We have three options here. We can change hosts, we can change the data store, and we can change both the host and the data store. Uh, now this last one only comes up when we are when we have the VM powered off. So we have all three options. Right now we could either change the data store, the host, or both in the powered off. But we're just going to move uh, that VM that's off on 70, and we're going to move it over to 80. So we're, we're, next window here, we're going to select that host, dot .80. And down here you can see if everything is working on your compatibility, you should get a validation succeeded. If for some reason you have a network problem or any other problem, you will not get a validation succeeded. So the next thing uh, uh, we see here is we're, we're going to be assigning it to this host. And now we go ahead and complete the migration. And that uh, VM has now migrated to, from uh, host 70 to host 80. Uh, next, we're going to power on that uh, VM to make sure we can migrate it uh, from host 80 to host 90. So we'll go ahead and uh, power it on. Uh, just right click on it, select power and on. And then once that's powered on, you'll get this green light or this green uh, looks like an arrow pointing to the right. Now right click and you should be able to migrate that again. And this time we're going to migrate it to host 90. Again, we get a validation succeeded, so it looks like it's going to work. And go ahead and finish that and we've gone from 80 uh, to 90. You know, we haven't had any problems. So this looks like it's working. Uh, next, we need to migrate this back to 80. We need to make sure that the migration, when these are powered on, go both ways. Uh, you can still have a problem uh, with this, so we need to make sure it works in both directions. And we're going to go back to 80. And it did. It completed that migration from 90 back to 80. So we're, we're migrating uh, our VMs, uh, both powered off and powered on. And this pretty much verifies that vMotion network is working and it's working internally since these are uh, nested hosts. So we don't have any external networking going on. It's all internal networking. Well, that's it for now. Uh, next, we're going to be looking at uh, the clustering uh, for the HA and the DRS. So see you next time. Thanks for watching.